I quit. Building PCs just isn't fun anymore, so I'm not gonna do it. Instead, going forward with the future of this channel, I'm looking backwards into the past. And that starts right here with what's in this box. We got a box! We got a box! Man, I'm excited. Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host CJ, and this month marks the three year anniversary of this YouTube channel. And one thing I learned in that time is my almost 37 years of PC building experience really doesn't contribute in any way to building a modern day PC or in teaching you how to build a PC. As long as you pick the right motherboard for the CPU and have enough power for it all, it's as simple as plugging the components into their respectively shaped sockets, screwing it into a case, plugging it all in. We learned this general concept really early in life. One of my goals in starting this channel was to teach you guys what I know about building PCs. But realistically, once you watch one really good how to build a PC video, you know how to build a PC. And there are dozens of really good PC building tutorials on YouTube. Not to mention the types of affordable price to performance PC builds I do, nobody really wants to watch. The high end multi thousand dollar PC builds using the latest and greatest hardware is what we want to see. Most of us will never be able to afford that, but it's fun to live vicariously through our favorite YouTube. And I get that. Not to mention the disparity between high end and mid range and low end PC has gotten so ridiculous. Back in the late 90s, early 2000s, a top of the line gaming PC would cost you between $1,500 and $2,000. Today, that'll barely buy you a top of the line graphics card. And back then, the price to performance difference was actually reasonable. I remember when I upgraded my Voodoo 3 to a GeForce 256, the Nvidia card cost almost twice as much, but I got double the performance in all the games I played, and the GeForce cost the same $300 at launch as its predecessor, the TNT2 Ultra did. I mean, there was also the fact that those cards came out in the same year, and back then, in some cases, it was possible to put the wrong CPU in a motherboard. You could plug power cables in wrong, there were switches and jumpers on a board that did things like set voltages or clock speeds. And if you set them wrong, you could fry your entire system. You could buy a motherboard that was compatible with your CPU and RAM, but didn't have the right slot for your GPU. And there weren't things like PC part picker. You had to do your homework, research, or know someone like me. It was definitely more complicated than this, which is great for y'all. Being able to customize a PC to your needs pick the parts and build it yourself is awesome and it'll save you money in the long run. But for me, it's kind of boring. Knowing how to set the dip switches and jumpers on a socket seven board for a 75 megahertz AMD K5 versus a 233 megahertz Pentium MMX doesn't really contribute to showing you how to build this modern PC. So over the course of the next year, I'll be moving away from the budget gaming PC build guides and I'm going to start peppering in some different yet related content. The first of is right here in this box. What's in the box? I'm kidding in that. But let me prelude by saying that I'm probably going to have much more of an emotional reaction to this than most of you will. But bear with me because this video is more about what I think I can still teach you than what this is. This is just a starting point for the journey. Okay. Let's look at this open. Oh, packing peanuts. Oh, lots of them. Oh, it's the egg roll kind. Oh. Hmm, tastes like popcorn. All right, there it is. It has been 40 years, 39 years since I opened this box. Oh. 
There it is. It's got some accessories. That's garbage. That's obsolete. This is it. Gotta I'll go through that later. Welcome to the world of friendly computing. <laughs> A lot of you know what this is. For those who don't, this is the Commodore 64, released in 1982 and sold through 1994. With over 12.5 million units sold, it's still, to this day, the best-selling computer of all time. And many of my regular viewers will know, this was my first computer. I still remember opening a box just like this on Christmas morning, 1983. I learned how to type on this computer, I learned to code in basic, I learned to game, I learned how to troubleshoot computer circuitry when it broke. When I was 10 years old, I borrowed my uncle's soldering iron and learned how to solder by replacing a blown capacitor in this computer. I mean, I remember in junior high while the other kids were writing out or typing their essays on typewriters, I was using a word processor with spell check and auto formatting on my Commodore 64 with plenty of Ultima 2 game breaks, of course. This was the one piece of tech that started my journey and passion for computers and technology. It was even what I based my custom framework mainboard enclosure on, the CJ64. Spec-wise, this has an 8-bit 1.023 MHz CPU, 64 kilobits of RAM, hence the name, 20 kilobits of ROM storage, which holds the kernel, character data, and basic operating system, no internal writable storage, it has 16 color 320 by 200 pixel graphics and what was actually a pretty revolutionary sound chip at the time. But for reference, that makes this Raspberry Pi 3 over a thousand times faster than the Commodore. Now, I just unboxed a really cool piece of retro tech, but I'm not going all retro all the time. There are plenty of really good retro tech channels and creators on the platform besides YouTube algorithm doesn't really allow channels to change direction, and most importantly, I don't really wanna. I'm still gonna primarily cover new tech, review PC and Mac related hardware, new laptops. I'm even gonna do at least one more PC build this year because, well, I already bought the parts, but my intention is over a long period of time, show all of you who may not have been into tech for as long as me, how we went from this to this. My rough outline of a plan is to start with my full Commodore setup, 1702 monitor, 1541 floppy drive, and from there, rebuild some of my gaming systems through the decades. My first 486 to base DOS system from around 91, 92, my first like real 3D gaming system, the Pentium Pro with dual Voodoo 2 cards and SLI, or maybe my Pentium 3 700 GeForce 256 system from the late 90s, my first high-end gaming system from around 2006, 2007 with a Core 2 Quad and two 8800 GTXs and SLI. There are a lot to choose from. I don't know which parts I can actually get my hands on because probably like many of y'all, in order to afford new computer parts, I had to sell the old ones and I only have so much room and well, money to be honest, but we'll see how it develops. Now, I'm gonna do a whole video on the Commodore 64 and all its peripherals, but I'm not gonna end this video without first actually teaching y'all something, and of course, testing this retro computer. So if you're ever interested in buying any retro tech, whether it's a Commodore 64, an old console, or even like a retro stereo, there are things you should check before you just plug it in and turn it on because for example this c64 might be perfectly functional until i plug it in the wall and it releases its magic smoke first thing this external power supply just assume it's bad the chips in this computer are very sensitive to voltage fluctuations and quickly die if the supplied voltage exceeds their five volts and they're 40 years old this is also a 40 year old power brick which i'm not going to kill my computer with now, I can easily test to make sure it's delivering the correct voltage, 
but luckily most cool retro tech that people still use other people make replacement stuff for and there are companies making modern replacement power supplies for the Commodore and a lot of other retro tech so I bought one but before I plug it in I want to inspect the internals so let's crack this open okay I'm grounded got my screwdriver Home Depot what you think I was gonna say all right let's open this up okay that's it three screws then just lift this up disconnect Ooh, cobwebs disconnect the retro tech okay oh yeah cobwebs dust okay now the first thing I noticed is the useless FCC required cardboard RFI shield is still here and the static strap is still connected so this may or may not have been opened before and worked on I see a lot of the chips are socketed which that could be normal when Commodore ran low on chips they would just stick sockets on the board and then just plug the chips in when they got them back in stock but all the chips look like they're from early 1983 which actually matches this board revision this would be the second revision of the c64 which came after the silver label or the first commodore 64s from 82 this kernel rom may be a replacement but importantly all the chips are oh almost all the chips are here one more to check no vic 2 well and that matches to all the chips are here it's not uncommon for some chips to have been scavenged especially the SID or the sound chip the CPU and this video chip the VIC-2 now the other thing I want to check are the electrolytic capacitors these little battery looking things on the board they actually have chemicals in them like a battery and like a battery can dry out or leak over time and again these are 40 years old so I'm looking for any that may be bulging especially on the top or leaking some gunk onto the board these axial ones are starting to look a little fried but I think we should be okay I'm gonna replace them all but it should be good enough to test for now so let me put it back together and get it set up okay here it is now I do have an original Commodore 1702 CRT monitor but it doesn't work yet I'll fix it hopefully but to test this I'm just using an older LCD TV with a composite input and an 8 pin DIN to composite video cable the image won't be as clear as it could be but it'll let me know if this is working so video in power in and power on and there it is I have a basic screen 64k of RAM and a prompt with a blinking cursor and it looks I mean not bad but that's it unlike today when we build a PC and it posts and we call it good this doesn't mean everything is working so just a couple of tests okay some keys are sticky a good cleaning will probably fix that I mean there were cobwebs in there after all but it seems to work but of course we need to write the obligatory basic program when first starting a Commodore 64 <laughs> and there you go I know it seems stupid but I have chills like eight-year-old me is freaking out right now but one more test this is an original Commodore 64 game cartridge so power off yeah that's how it's done no shutdown procedure just flip the switch now we'll insert the cartridge now I'm not 100% sure this cartridge works even but this control port 2 
I remember that. This is the original Commodore joystick, exact one I had when I was eight years old. And I've actually already restored and refurbished this one. So hopefully it works. Now, flip it on. Uh, ah, and there it is, Frogger. Circa 1981 on period correct hardware. And the joystick seems to work. I mean, let me cheat a little, but I don't hear, hold on a minute. Oh, so you hear that buzzing and the really faint beeping of Frogger running around. I think the SID chip may be dead in this or the sound chip. Yeah, that's too bad, but oh, I'm no good at this stuff. Yeah, that sounds bad, but it could just be this cable and I do have another different cable. So let's give that a try. Okay, swapped out the cable. Uh, yeah, no change. Yeah, I can hear it, but well, probably a dead SID chip, but I'll break out the multimeter and oscilloscope if I need to and troubleshoot and fix. I also have a non-functional CRT monitor and a floppy drive on the way that may or may not work. So probably a lot of poking, prodding, diagnosing and repairing in my future, but that's not really the kind of content I do on the channel. There are really good creators that are dedicated to that stuff. Jan Beta, Adrian Digital Basement, Retro Recipes, those come to mind. Once I have everything working, I'll do a video setting it all up, checking it out, and doing some retro gaming. Maybe if y'all are interested, I'll live stream the repairs like a Q&A session while I recap boards and try to diagnose and repair retro tech. I mean, if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments. It could be fun. I mean, I need to do this stuff anyway. It'd be cool to have some company. But what I really want y'all to share in the comments is what is that one piece of tech that really got you hooked like the Commodore did for me? Was it a console, your first PC, maybe even your first smartphone? Sound off below. And while you're there, be sure to hit that like. It'll definitely help with this video, particularly as this is content I typically don't do so the algorithm probably won't push it out unless it gets really good engagement. Of course, consider subscribing if you're not already and I'll see you in the next one.